I wanna thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video. What's up everyone? No matter how many videos I make about which TVs are great or not so great, we still get questions about what is the best TV to buy right now at this size, at this price, and I'm gonna go over all that. I'm gonna start off with some smaller TVs, some that are better price points because I know not everyone's looking to buy a 100 inch huge TV, but I will get to those toward the end. I have some really good suggestions because man, there are some new ones coming out, but there are a couple great ones that are out right now. So let's get into this. Let's go through your guys' questions and differentiate the best TVs that I would recommend right now for you. The first question comes from Anthony Hershko who says, I have the QN95B. Is there a huge change going to the QN95C? And I get the same kind of questions with the QN90C and QN90B. So it's really just, you know, should you get this year's QLED? in 2023 or should you just buy the last year's one while you still can and going to the Best Buy website which is where I'm going to check out these prices and see what I think is the best opportunity you go into the top deals here and once you get into there you can see all the TVs that have discounted prices and some that don't so I'm going to show you what I would do right now if it was me because some of the TVs from last year I'd say let's hold off but most of them I'd say there's a good opportunity for you to buy one of those and so I really liked the Samsung top QLEDs last year. You have the QN90B right here, and you also have the QN95B. So as he was saying, this QN95B at 55 inch is very discounted at 1599. This TV has the one connect box. It has the same number of dimming zones as the Samsung QN90B. So there is not a ton of change. It does have a different set of speakers on the back. So it looks a little bit more like the 8K model. So if you're gonna set this on a stand and you want a very clean look with the ability to kind of tuck all your wires into a cabinet below and not have a lot of clutter up on your table or entertainment center, then yes, the QN95B and 95B is a really awesome TV. It's probably one of the absolute best QLED TVs from last year. And the same thing goes for the QN90B and the difference being that this does not have a one connect box. So if you're gonna hang your TV on the wall and the HDMI cords and power outlet are already up on the wall, then this would be a better TV for you because you don't have to worry about that one connect box. So that's kind of either you really like the one connect box or you don't. You have two different options. This QN90B is available in the US a little bit more readily, whereas that Q QN95B is pretty much out of stock except for that 55 inch model where you can find it in some stores. But both of these TVs are fantastic. And if you've seen in my new videos, the new QN95C is not very readily available yet at all in the US. While the QN90C, which I do have up here, kind of is a different TV in general. And if you're looking at that 65 inch, you're talking about another $900 to get this year's version of the 90 series Samsung. And to be honest, it's a completely different TV. It has a different panel. It has different anti-reflective capabilities. The dimming algorithm seems to be pretty good and the angle from viewing is also very good. So I still think this is gonna be a great opportunity to buy later in the year and the QN95C, the, the C represents the 2023 model, whereas the B is the 2022 model. But right now it's hard to not just tell you guys that this QN90 B is such a great TV and you can go up in size too. You know, the 75 inch is 2000 and the 85 inch is only 2299. So that's very tough to beat. It is available in my area. It's probably available in your area. As you can see, I purchased this last year. Highly recommend this TV. It is enormous. It has very good anti-reflective properties, very bright. I love that TV and um, this would be one of the TVs that I would recommend in almost all these sizes. So to answer the question, the QN95B was great. I don't necessarily think it's worth upgrading to you know one year later QLED. So I would just stick with these ones that are a year old. But then Mark Solomon also made a point, which is you know there's all kinds of different QLED TVs. And basically what he was saying in the question was, if he was gonna buy a 55, 65, or 75 inch QLED TV, he'd probably choose a Hisense U8H and save a substantial amount of money. And that's not such a bad idea because if you look at that TV, here is the Hisense U8H from last year. This was something that we reviewed and you know there's a review if you wanna check it out on our channel. But this is a 65 inch TV that performs almost as good as that Samsung QN90B that I was just talking about in both black levels and in brightness. And that one was 
$15.99 and this is $8.99 for a 65 inch. So you're talking like half the price. And some would say, well, I don't know what Hisense is. I, I'm not familiar with it. Or maybe some people have had issues with Hisense TVs not lasting as long as they'd like. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Everybody complains about TVs not lasting as long as they like, but you got a hundred people that it worked for, for the one person that's complaining it didn't work for, right? So every TV is going to have that. I don't necessarily think that the Hisense suffers from any, you know, long-term issues. We have this TV here in the 75 inch. The kids use it for gaming. They've been using it for a year straight with no issues. Never had a concern. So I really like this TV. It's got Dolby Vision, you know, it's mini LED, you can game 4K at 120, super bright, has really good dimming zone algorithms. So I think Mark was correct. This is a fantastic opportunity to buy. It looks like they only have the 65 and the 55, but you're talking about 55 inch for $649 and the 65 inch for $899. Both really good opportunities. And it does come with the Google TV operating system, which I I might like better than the Tizen operating system anyway. So if you're a Google user, or if you like that, that would be great. And I wanted to just roll that straight into the other model, which is not a mini LED, but it's really good TV, U7H. And this one is even less expensive. So this is 549 for a 55 inch. And this is the TV that I have recommended to most of my family to buy because of that price point And because I know most people don't really care about every single bell and whistle that you can get on a TV. And this still has... 4K 120 gaming if you're a gamer. It has great dimming algorithm. It's fairly bright. It you know looks great with sports. I mean, a couple of years ago, I'd say that the Hisense TVs weren't as great with motion and upscaling and all that, but I think they've come a long way. So the U7H was something that I'm thrilled with. And so probably one of the best TVs you can buy for under 600 bucks at 55 inch. I'd highly recommend any of these. And you can actually get a 75 inch version of that for $999. So $1,000 or less for a 75 inch TV really good. And just to be fair, TCL does have some really good TVs like this as well. This is a five series QLED. Now this one does come with the Roku TV. Uh, I was looking for some that had the Google operating system. It's a little harder to find those in stock. However, this is also 549. So if you aren't as familiar or if you're not as comfortable with the Hisense TV, this one is basically the same price and you get the Roku operating system. So people that have something like the Spectrum app and they want to utilize that for watching cable, the Roku TCL comes with that app and you can just fire it up and it's 549. Someone asked me about an outdoor TV and I think I recommended this as well. Uh, you know, you don't need to buy one of those super, super bright outdoor TVs. These work great. I've recommended them all the time. I've installed them. 550 bucks, you got your, you know, pool TV or you're, you know, watching it while you're in the sauna, all that. Now moving up in size and quality, maybe to a degree, we're going to be talking about the larger 77 inch TVs and beyond. So Steve Coates mentioned that he liked that we enjoyed that Samsung uh, QN95C, great new QLED, but for the money, are you still better off with a G3, which is the LG G3 OLED or the S95C, which is the Samsung QD OLED. And I think that's going to be something that people are asking all year long, two really good TVs. TVs, but they're different to a degree. Now, we had the S95C in the house, 77 inch. Super excited for that. It isn't on sale currently, but I'm sure as the year goes on, you'll find an opportunity to buy that for less than the current price, which is, you know, the retail for $44.99. And I think the G3 is going to be the same. But this QD OLED is a second generation. It's much brighter than the previous years. It does have a new look, which again, makes it look more like the 8K models. And it's a 4K TV, which I think is fine because I'm not, you know, really bought into 8K. 8K yet. I barely watch things that are on 4K. So a lot of the stuff that I'm watching is upscaled. And I thought that this S95C looks really good for that sort of content, the SDR and the cable and the news and sports. Incredibly bright, almost too bright to be honest, for a bedroom TV where it just lights up the room. But we really like this. It does come with that One Connect box. It is the only 4K to come with a One Connect box this year, which is a bit disappointing to not have an opportunity for other 4K models. But you know, if you need one, this is the TV that you should get from Samsung. But then I did get an opportunity to finally see the 77 inch G3, which is different than the larger 83 inch. This actually has the MLA technology and my video upcoming on this is gonna be awesome. So definitely check that out when it comes. But I was really impressed with the G3 and most what impressed me was that we had mounted this on the wall and it has such a clean look. And then the anti-reflective coating was so solid. It blacked out the screen so you couldn't see any of the reflections or lights in the background. And then on top of that, the MLA technology micro lens array 
is going to increase brightness by a lot. So I know a couple of people have made videos about this. I mean, you're talking about 1600 nits or more in the smaller areas, which kind of makes this whole QLED versus OLED contest almost irrelevant if you can get an OLED TV that can get this bright. And when I was installing this, we realized that the TV was on power saving mode, then we took it off that, then the backlight wasn't all the way up to 100%, then the panel was not all the way at high luminance. So, I mean, it got so incredibly bright. I'm excited for this video to come out, but the G3 looks like a big winner. So I love both of these TVs, but let's be honest, both of those TVs are extremely expensive. And if you wanna buy something right now, I still highly recommend getting the LG C2 from last year because this TV is fantastic. I loved it. It is better than 95% of the TVs out there. So the two TVs that I gave you are probably better than this, but the cost of this is $27.99 for a 77 inch, which is you know $1,700 less than the Samsung and half the price of that G3. So if I was sitting there trying to purchase the TV right now, I would buy this and never look back. It looks great on the wall. It looks great on the stand. Very bright for an OLED TV. I love it. I have no issues with this. It's one of the best gaming TVs you can get along with those other two. Fantastic, it has every gaming feature you could ask for. And I know that people have this going all the way from 42, 48 inch, all the way up to 83 inch. But this 77 inch is a perfect TV to get right now because the other Samsung and LG that I showed you are so much more expensive. So. Check out this TV, I think this is a great opportunity. And this TV, like all the other ones that we're talking about, can be found in the description below. You can click on the links, and it'll take you to the Best Buy website where you can purchase or not purchase, totally up to you. If you do, we earn a small commission from that sale, we appreciate it. No pressure though, you guys need to get what's best for you. And just a reminder that if you're looking at that $2,800 price point right here and you're saying, wow, that's still so expensive, then go back to this Hisense U7H that was $9.99. And remember, it has almost all the features. It is an LED TV though, so it's not OLED, not gonna get the perfect contrast that you get with an OLED, but I was quite happy with this. One third of the price, just saying. Now getting into the big boys, we got a question from DD basically asking, he's in the market for an 80 inch or larger, what would I recommend? Do you think the A90J would be a good choice for the money? That is a TV from Sony, it's an OLED, and I have an answer for you. Now the A90J from Sony is $44.99, which is significantly decreased from the $8,000 price point that it came out at. I had this fantastic, beautiful OLED. I loved every second of it. And what I really like is it has the ability to be used as a center channel if you have a Sony system. So if you have one of their sound bars or their HTA9 system, the panel vibrates, produces great sound as a center channel. I love that feature. And overall with the heat sink and all the features, I think it's still a great opportunity. But there are some competitors and I did have the LG C2 that I was just talking about before against the A90J and I found it to be basically the same. I found it to be slightly brighter in most scenes while the upscaling and everything else looked pretty darn close. So I'd say that they're very close. This is $42.99 and the other one is $44.99 here. So the C2 is a year newer. I do like that the LG has its own like channels you can watch on the home screen, which may not be a big deal to everyone. This is a better gaming TV. So if you're a gamer, I'd go with the LG. So the C2 a year newer and now the C3 is coming out. And I have to say, one thing that I didn't mention before is that the C3 looks really awesome and it's the 10th year and all that, but it's more or less the exact same TV. TV as a C2. So this is a great opportunity to get this. I think it's $1,200 less than the new model. And I don't think there's a whole lot different. So if you're a Sony person, maybe you get the A90J. If you're an LG person, this is a great opportunity to get the 83 inch. And if you want a couple other alternatives, I'm going to go with Again, the Samsung QN90B, because this is like half the price of either one of those. It's kind of insane. If you're watching you know, bright sports, if you're watching bright HDR, if you have a lot of windows in your house, this is gonna be a great opportunity to buy right here. $22.99, you can't really beat that for that size. It's incredibly good and it's very powerful and performs well for that price point. So I would continue to buy this if you're not sold into the OLED if you're concerned that it may have a shelf life, which I'm not really, but let's just face it, it's organic material in an OLED TV. I understand that it has a shelf life, all TVs do to a degree, but this is an LED TV, it's got the backlight, 
$22.99. Very good QLED from Samsung, as I've mentioned about four times in this video now. And if you wanted something from Sony here, we do have the X90K. This is from last year as well. And that's even less at 2000. Now, I don't think this performs as well as the Samsung QN90B that I just showed you. Probably not for your theater room because it doesn't have the perfect black levels that an OLED or even that other Samsung QLED has. But this is a really good price and a lot of people buy this, especially around sports seasons. You know, if you're buying it for the big game, I mean, football's coming up here and this is a good one to buy earlier than later because it'll be until Black Friday for the newer version of this to be anywhere near this price. So I think that this is a good one as well. And before I get into the massive 98 inch plus TVs, I just want to mention, Deus asked why I haven't reviewed the QN900C from Samsung. Basically, why haven't I reviewed any 8K models? And I just want to say in general, I'm not a huge fan of 8K because of a couple reasons. One, there isn't any 8K content that I'm worried about. There's hardly any 4K content when you're watching broadcasts. They tried to broadcast the Super Bowl in 4K and you know, I don't know, maybe 10% of people watched it in 4K. Everyone else is watching it on cable like the rest of us. And so 8K just isn't something that I'm like needing to get in order to watch that sort of content. Secondly, when we do the 4K shootouts or the 8K shootouts, I don't see a lot of benefit. Sometimes there's a little bit better features, a little bit better processing, but it seems like, you know, we have bad side effects. We have more dirty screen effect, or we're not seeing a benefit in brightness. I just don't have a big love for the AK models yet. And this QN900C that they're talking about, just a 75 inch version is almost $6,000. So purchasing something from last year, if you wanna get an 8K, the QN900B, I know some people like that, but I'm not sold on 8K TVs yet. What I'm more interested in is a 100 inch TV screen. So let's talk about that. Because I had a question from Sunny Reyna that said, please suggest Samsung 98 inch 4K TV or 8K TV, what's the best you should get? And also there is no 8K content like I just said. And that leads me to one of the TVs that I've had all year and I'm a big fan of, which is the TCL 98 inch R754. Now this TCL QLED has been out for about nine months now, maybe almost a year. And I think it's fantastic. I was recommending this at $8,500 because the other models at the time were 10,000 or more, really like $15,000 or more. And now there are gonna be two new models coming one from TCL that's gonna be 10 to $12,000, which is a mini LED, the QM8. And then we have a Sony model, which is gonna be the X90L in 98 inch, and that's gonna be about $10,000 as well, similar to this X90K of last year. Probably a little better, but still gonna be over $10,000. So when I see that this 98 inch XL series is only $5,000 right now, it's clearly a TV you should consider if you want a 100 inch. I think I was one of only a few people that reviewed this specific model and everybody was watching that video because it's massive and it's a good price. And then when other people saw that TV at CES this year, everyone was like, wow, that's a lot better than I thought it would be, which kind of was reinforcing what I had already said, which is that's an awesome TV. I would buy it in a heartbeat. It is currently the TV that I have in my living room because the size, performance, and the price. Enormous, hard to go back down to an 85 inch once you've seen a 98 inch in a space. It's pretty bright for the price. It does get to about 750 to 800 nits, and that was more than that Sony that I was showing you, and that's only available in the 85 inch anyways. But if that new 98 inch that they have coming out this year is brighter, cool, so be it, but that's still starting out at $10,000. So I really wanna reiterate that this TCL 98 inch is the way to go if you wanna get a big one, because some of the other ones, like here's a Sony 100 inch, that's down to 10,000, which is pretty cool. I mean, that is $5,000 off its price point, but you're still talking double the TCL, and it's, a, it's tough to pull the trigger on that unless you got some, some spare change laying around. And then of course you have the 97 inch OLED, which is, you know, $25,000 in-store only. So, you know, if that's realistic for you, awesome TV, loved it. But, you know, it's not realistic for me. So I keep going back to this TCL 100 inch. Uh, again, I'm excited for their new 98 inch. It's going to be a mini LED. It's probably going to be better than this TV, but that's at least starting out at twice the price of this one. And so that's what I have at this 98 inch size, the TCL. Now, if you're going to buy a TV from Best Buy, I highly recommend you also become a Total Tech member. You get 24 seven communication with the Geek Squad support. Very useful, especially if you have smaller tech products or even if you have TVs, you can you know troubleshoot some of the issues you have. You do 
get fast two-day shipping on most items, including TVs. Some of those come so fast for me. I'm a big fan of their expedited shipping. One of the great things you get is an extended 60-day return policy. For me, very difficult to choose in 14 days if something's gonna stick or not. 60 days gives you a peace of mind. You have two full months to figure out if it's gonna be something that works for you. And then last but not least, you get two years, 24 months of extended warranty, where most things you get one year, and a lot of times for me, I know it's, it's not like a joke, it always breaks down at like 13th month. So two years, warranty, fantastic. I highly recommend you check the link out below to become a Total Tech member. Again, I wanna thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video and check out a couple more unboxing videos right here. I'll see you in the next one.